Hey, it's Russ from the Infectious Groove Podcast. Coming up today on our vinyl channel, out of all the records that I have, I'm going to do something a little unique. What if I only got to keep five records? Going to get into it in just a second. Coming right up. Okay, so if you watch the channel, you've seen I've got a pretty nice selection of vinyl that I've gathered for all over all these years. And uh, I truly love all the records that I have for one reason or another. But I was thinking about it, and uh, what if we had to move somewhere really small and I had to pare it down to just five records? Which ones would I take? And if you've seen the channel or if you've listened to the podcast, you, you might ha think you have a good idea of what it is that I would take immediately. Maybe they'd be all Pink Floyd records or something along those lines. But uh, I thought about it and I came up with five records that I think are um, diverse and reasons why they would be the ones that I would keep. So here we go. First one in the number five slot that I personally would hold on to if I had to get rid of everything but five is uh, Where the Light Is by John Mayer. Now this one's a little interesting because I'm not even that big of a John Mayer fan, but it's a uh, four LP set, so I'm cheating right off the bat, uh, but it counts as one title. And on this particular set, John plays tons of different type of music. He plays, uh, this, is, this concert is really interesting because he opens for himself solo, um, and then after that he plays with his pop band uh, that does all the Waiting on the World to Change, all that type of stuff that you know from the radio. Uh, and then those two are kind of the opening acts where he's opening for himself with the John Mayer Blues Trio. So it's really quite a showcase of what John Mayer is able to do. And uh, during the blues section of this, he ends up doing my favorite John Mayer song, which is Vultures, and the version on here is stunningly good. So even though I'm not a huge John Mayer fan, I would hang on to this because You've got the acoustic uh, stuff, which is kind of pop and uh, singer-songwriter-ish. Uh, then you've got all of the pop stuff that he does in the middle of this. Then the whole thing is capped off by a blistering blue set. And even if you're not a huge John Mayer fan, just know that his backing band includes Steve Jordan and Pino Palladino. Uh, I once heard another well-respected bass player when the name Pino Palladino came up said, oh, we all walk in his shadow. So if you're a bass player or a fan of good blues music, you probably know who Pino is. Amazing, stunning blues set on here. So that's why that comes in at number five that I would keep if I had to get rid of everything except for five. We've got a couple coming up here that one that's definitely country and then one f that from an artist who uh, could be considered country, but not on this particular record. But let's get down to business. This one right here. Garth Brooks' Rope in the Wind, I would absolutely hang on to this if I only had five records that I could hang on to. This is Garth's third album. Very, 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 very country. Very, very twangy. And as a matter of fact, not a lot of his huge hits came off of this record. Uh, most of his hits came off of the two before it uh, and the two after this one. Uh, but there's a ton of stuff on here that means a lot to me personally. Really the album front to back is stunningly good in my opinion. Uh, kicks right off with Against the Grain which is more of a rock type song. Um, Garth would revisit that sound a lot more later on in his career. But you do have Rodeo on here which is a huge hit. Uh, but everything else there's just country country songs on her. Uh, Cold Shoulder, Burning Bridges, Lonesome Dove, just fantastic songs that really showcase Garth's ability to be a storyteller and things that this is kind of the setup album for the rest of his career at least in my opinion and uh, for me personally I think this is might be his overall best record even though it doesn't have a lot of the hits uh, something I can listen front to front to back easily makes its way into the top five slot if I only got to keep five records The next one, like I say, some people might consider this artist to be country. Um, he definitely has country records. There are country spots on this album. There are the two records that were preceding it, huge country records. But this one here is a whole different animal. This is Sturgill Simpson's third album, A Sailor's Guide to Earth. Absolutely stunningly good album. And yes, it does continue the country train from Garth, but it also has R&B, 
and soul, and there's a, you know, Call to Arms is more of a rock song than anything. Uh, there's even tinges of funk in songs like Keep Between the Lines, uh, which is so far my favorite song that Sturgill Simpson's recorded. Just a fantastic, fantastic album. And uh, you want to talk about the ability to just do something most other people wouldn't. There's a uh, country cover of Nirvana's In Bloom on here that incorporates horns. Uh, it's just a stunningly good record. Uh, easily something I can listen to front to back and would be something uh, that I feel I couldn't live without. So Sturgill Simpson's third effort, Sailor's Guide to Earth. <laughs> Now we're on to the top two records that I would keep if I could only keep five records. And one of them is my favorite album by this particular artist and actually my favorite album of all time. And the other isn't even my favorite album by this particular artist, but it is the one that I would take with me. That is uh, Michael Jackson's 1987 album, Bad. Not my favorite Michael Jackson album, but easily the one that I would keep if I could only keep uh, what you know one LP from him to round out the five uh, mostly because it's just loaded with hits front to back uh, the way you make me feel dirty Diana man in the mirror smooth criminal bad I just can't stop loving you on and on and on the record is just stunningly good and even though it's not my personal favorite record by him uh, it is one that I feel works the best overall for uh, a great mood and uh, the reasons why people listen to Michael Jackson, that feel-good, uh, upbeat swing that he had on all of his earlier material is all found here. I will have in the future a Top 5 Michael Jackson album video and I will detail where this lands and what is my favorite one but if i were only keeping five lps uh this would be the one that i would choose as far as the number one spot goes if you saw my top five pink floyd albums video then you probably knew where this was going when it started but for me hands down pink floyd the wall if i was doing a video of keeping one album out of everything that i have Pink Floyd The Wall would be the one that I keep. I can't say enough good things about this record. If you want to know more detail about why I feel the way I feel about it, you can watch the top five Pink Floyd albums video that's available on our channel. But all the way across the board, this has always been my favorite record ever since I heard it back in the late 80s. Uh, I was uh, too young to, to know about it when it came out. But as soon as I got a hold of it in the late 80s, it's my love for this album has only grown on. Uh, again, like John Mayer, it's a double LP, so it's cheating a little bit, but it's still one title. Um, and Pink Floyd does nearly every style of music that they do all on this record, and they do it very, very well. So I feel like with this, the Michael Jackson, the Sturgill Simpson, the John Mayer, Garth Brooks, all of those different titles together would, in just five albums, would give me a really good cross-section of material to listen to. What about you? If you could only keep five CDs, uh, vinyl LPs, if you could only have five songs saved on your phone, however you want to do it, what would they be? Uh, leave us a comment below and let us know. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel, share the video with other people, go ahead and hit that notification button so you know every time we have a new video, and thanks for watching. <laughs>